A 69-year-old morbidly obese woman started complaining bowel function alteration with prevalent stipsis and episodes of rectal bleeding. A colonoscopy was performed and it showed an ulcerated lesion about 25 cm from the anal margin, which was an adenocarcinoma. CT showed no other lesion outside the left colon. There was correspondence between CT and preparative colonoscopy, with endoscopic tattoo 5 cm distal to the lesion. Independently of weight, we use an open technique with perimbilical Hasson trocar placement. In obese patients, we place such trocar some centimeters above the navel. We then placed an epigastric 5 mm trocar, another 5 mm trocar in the left iliac region, a 12 mm in the right lumbar region, and a 12 mm trocar in the right iliac region. We first proceeded with abdominal exploration with the absence of metastatic lesions. We immediately noticed the poor visibility of the preparative marking due to the extensive presence of visceral fat. Even the dissection of the gastrocolic ligament and the entry to the lesser sac were difficult for the abundance of adipose tissue in the structures. We then proceeded from right to left to release plenic flexure using a mixed approach to overcome the technical difficulties, starting from the gastrocolic ligament without finishing it, then dissecting the lateral aspect of the descending column. We finished the dissection from medial to lateral of the plane between tolga and gerota until completion of the mobilization of the splenic flexure. Visualization of the inferior mesenteric vein, which was lifted, created an arch that allows dissection by opening a window between tolg fascia anteriorly and the gerota fascia posteriorly. We proceeded in the dissection of this avascular plane. The isolation of inferior mesenteric vein, right below the inferior margin of the pancreas, was really difficult for the abundance of fat, and then we clipped with hemolocked and divided it, leaving a gauze in this window until the descending column will be fully mobilized. In Trendelenburg position with rotation to the right, we then visualize the sacral promontory and the root of the sigmoid mesentery, having the vision horizontally relative to the aortic plane, identifying the inferior mesentery artery pedicle from this view. The usual gentle stretch of this pedicle is really difficult due to the abundance of fat. When the mesenteric window was created, we then proceeded with the dissection and preparation of the artery, with a ligation and section between hemolocks at its origin for oncological purposes. We then continued medial to lateral until we created an opening in the left lateral peritoneal attachment, reaching the plane properly prepared.
preparation of the rectal mesentery plane to prepare the rectum for transaction, taking care to protect the retroperitoneal structures near the sacral promontory. Individuation of the distal transaction point with the release from lateral adhesions. Preparation of the rectum and partial dissection of rectal mesentery, individuation and section of the superior rectal artery and completion of the rectal preparation. Transaction of the rectum with a laparoscopic linear cutter stapler. We then decided for a subumbilical mini laparotomy and not for a phonestin incision for the presence of pubic intertrigo, which is typical in obese patients, in order to reduce the possibility of surgical site infections. We use the ring wound protector and retractor to exteriorize the colon with its mesentery. We then verify the adequacy of the distal margin, we then transected the mesocolon and the inferior mesenteric vein. Preparation of the proximal colon stamp for the anastomosis. We performed an ICG angiography which displayed incomplete coloration of the margin, so we decided to dissect about another 2 cm with confirmation by ICG angiography. A 29 mm anvil of an EA circular stapler is inserted into the proximal cut and secured with a purse string, now with a purse string clamp. The colon is placed back into the abdomen and pneumoperitoneum was reestablished. Packaging of a transanal anastomosis with an EA circular stapler with intact stapler donuts. Pneumatic leak test was performed and it was negative. A peritoneal drainage is placed near the anastomosis. She had a regular clinical course and was discharged in the 7th postoperative day.